Welcome back. You're watching the Global Dialogue. We're in conversation with the president and CEO of G Healthcare on their big announcement of investing 8,000 crore rupees over the next five years in India. Uh, you know, since we're talking about the future of diagnosis, Peter, uh, let me also ask you about the future of innovation and its ability to be more accessible and more affordable. How do you see this convergence of innovation and access, and what is GE Healthcare now focusing on to ensure that you can provide breakthroughs on that front? Yeah, no, it's a great question, and I'm sure you see this in other industries that is that uh, you're, you're, you're speaking to different leaders. Uh, you know, the AI piece in many ways democratizes or makes available technologies that really were challenged in the past. I think one of the interesting things in India with the tech stack structure that you've created, this ability to have more SaaS capabilities, I think is gonna greatly change some of the business models that are out there. That companies like us maybe take more of a shared risk approach on different applications and capabilities. A customer doesn't have to come up with all this capital up front. They can actually pay as they go. Those models, you know, just haven't been that robust in healthcare. And I think you're going to see more of that. That's going to create access. And then the classic way, which is the more we have a supply chain here in India, the more we have development, the more we can make more locally customized products at the right cost point. But I think this point about AI and accessibility via SaaS um, is for healthcare specifically, one of the big access and access uh, uh, cost enablers that for many developing markets around the world. So, uh, you know, you talked about 60 products uh, that are out there in the market and in various degrees you, or varying degrees using uh, uh, AI. Uh, uh, what's, what's exciting to you as you look at your pipeline, as you look at your future pipeline today? Uh, uh, you know, what, what are the big bets that you're making? Well, there's a, there's a bunch of things, but I think this, this whole idea that pretty much in any place around the world, you can look at a given hospital and the data they collect off a given patient, 95% of it, once you are ad admitted or in that hospital, is never really looked at again. So there's this huge wealth of data that if you can mine, how you think about productivity in the hospital, how you think about uh, managing that patient proactively, all of that is what's super exciting for us. I think if we were to talk, you know, in six, five, six years from now, we will have even more and more revenue coming in from, from digital-based uh, products and capabilities. And I think that's just, uh, you know, this clock speed of what's happening, particularly with artificial intelligence and in, in changing that. That's a big part. The other side is that we didn't talk about is, you know, it, within med tech and also within pharmaceuticals, there's just a lot of explosion of, of new therapies that are coming out. Most of those therapies need image guidance, image follow-up, potentially screening, and, and we play a big role in that. And the combination of our devices around a given disease state with the focus on the right data, I think is gonna be pretty transformational. I'll just to give you an example, prostate cancer, there's some new drugs out um, from Novartis and, and, and those other companies that are coming out for radio pharmaceuticals. But to implement those drugs, you need to be able to scan on a PET CT, have an imaging agent, have a follow-up scanner that helps manage that. You have to integrate the data. We make all of those things. And so that's another exciting part that we become more and more integrated in a lot of these therapeutic pathways. Well, uh, let, let's uh, uh, get a big picture view from you on what uh, is happening globally as well as far as your business is concerned. 2023 has been a good year. And of course, your first year as a listed company as well. Uh, Peter, you've invested a billion dollars in R&D, uh, driven more than 40 innovations through the year and paid down a billion dollars in debt. Uh, uh, you know, so you expect this uh, sort of mid single digit uh, growth rate to continue over the next few years? Yeah, no, our focus uh, exactly is, is that we've laid out uh, from our investor day a little over a year and a half ago that we'd be a mid-single-digit grower and move our EBIT margins into the 17 to 20 percent range. We feel very good about that. We're on track to, to those targets in the mid-range. And, you know, the, the, the cool part is, honestly, for me, the technologies that we just went through have the opportunity to really take us to the higher end of that range or beyond. 
And, and that's the kind of business you want to be in. I think we run the core business really well. We can be in those ranges. And then if whether it be Theranostics, digital, uh, new capabilities within SaaS models, uh, all of those things, we have some really interesting opportunities to expand, as well as M&A. Um, you know, we've, we've already done about four deals. Um, I come from a background of, of doing tuck-in M&As is a great way to continue to also build out your clinical capabilities and growth. And so those are all the tools in front of us, and so we feel pretty good about it. You know, you, you talked about tuck-in M&As. Any specific areas of focus where you would look at inorganic opportunities? And, and could India potentially be a market at all that you're considering from an M&A perspective? Um, yeah, I think one of the things that we would uh, take a look at, really India as well as many markets around the world, is you know, different types of capabilities, whether they be distribution, whether they be different products. But what's interesting now, obviously, is the application capabilities, and particularly in a country like India, where there's a lot of smaller startup companies that actually could have products that we may want to partner with, let alone buy, those would be good opportunities. So we, we clearly you know, look across the landscape. I, I'm someone that's a big believer that weekly, myself with our BD team, we have an ongoing dialogue and take a look at opportunities that are out there. Anything, anything on the uh, anvil that's likely from an Indian startup perspective, from a potential collaboration or a partnership perspective for GE Healthcare? Well, nothing to announce today, but uh, obviously our partnership long time with, uh, with Wipro and, and how we're continuing to grow and look is, is really what we're focused on. But we, you know, we have a host of different partners throughout India either on go-to-market and, 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 and whatnot to actually help us. But I would say as we expand our base here in manufacturing, that will be an important part of thinking through as well. Peter, let me end by asking you about the joint venture with uh, GE, one of the longest uh, joint ventures that we've seen working very successfully in India, and joint venture that you inked in the 90s. Uh, you know, what does it take to, uh, to sort of keep this, uh, this uh, going, this relationship going, and what does the future look like as far as this joint venture is concerned? You know, I think uh, when we think about a good joint venture, it's uh, often like a good marriage. It comes down to one word, communication. I think we've just got a great partner, um, you know, Azim Primji and, and his team and what we've been able to do together over time. We've, you know, not always agreed on everything, but we've always worked to find a way for, to be successful <laughs> together. And, you know, we just look forward to continuing to grow that uh, over time. I think that's really what's uh, super important about it is we've got a common alignment and good people working together uh, to really solve you know, a common goal. And I think that's particularly in what we do in healthcare, this idea of creating a world where healthcare has no limits, trying to solve some of these big issues, it keeps us very much aligned. And we're you know, excited again to continue that forward. I'm going to try uh, my luck before we close, Peter. I know you don't give uh, region-wise breakup, but you know, just uh, uh, the aspirational target as far as what you believe the size of the India business could be over the next five years. I think it's going to be one of our top three biggest opportunities really around the globe to continue to expand. Um, it's, again, uh, I would place it there that says, it will merit more and more of my time and focus, um, not only on how we can actually, you know, make in India for the world, but the Indian market and then its growth potential and what it can mean to a company like GE Healthcare. So thank you so much. Thank you, Peter. We wish you the very best of luck. Appreciate you joining us here on CNBC TV 18. Good to see you back in India and look forward to more visits as well. Thanks very much for your time. With that, it is time for us to wrap up this edition of the Global Dialogue from all of us here on the team. For now, goodbye and many thanks for watching.